Assalamu alaikum guys welcome back okay so this is lecture 2 uh, now we are going to study the trends of the ionization energy in the periodic table okay guys so now um, this is your periodic table over here and in this periodic table if we go up the group or if we go across the period ionization energy will increase okay ionization energy will increase in both the cases okay going up the group and across the pier so up the group and across the pier increases ionization energy so if i were to ask you what will happen to the ionization energy if you go diagonally then the answer will still be the same it will increase why will it increase because going diagonally means going up the group and across the pier okay so in this case well in these trends the no noble gases they are excluded okay because uh, they are an exception they have a slightly different trend and so are the radioactive elements over here excluded this francium in group one is also excluded because it's radioactive okay it's radioactive now uh, this so according to this trend fluorine will be the most electronegative element of the periodic table excluding the noble gases and the radioactive elements okay the most uh, sorry, it will be the fluorine will be the sorry. I haven't discussed electronegativity yet, but fluorine is going to be the element having the most ionization energy right now. All right. Then apart from these trends, what about what happens to the atomic radius as you go across the period and uh, up the group? We have to discuss this trend as well. Atomic radius. What do you guys think will happen to the atomic radius as we go uh, up the group? Well, atomic radius, if you look at the size of the atom, atomic radius basically means the size of an, of an atom, okay. So, if you've got a, a hydrogen atom over here, what's the radius of a hydrogen atom? But do you know one thing, the radius isn't measured, you cannot measure the uh, radius of an atom. So, what you'll need to do to measure the radius of an atom is simple. You'll take a whole molecule of that uh, atom okay what scientists have done okay this is a whole molecule of hydrogen and they take the distance in between the nuclei this bond length basically the bond length is taken and half of that distance is the radius okay half of the distance is considered the radius of that atom now if you look at the radii and going down the group what happens going down the group the number of shells what happens to the number of shells the number of electron shells they are increasing right because lithium will have a three sorry two shells sodium will have three shells potassium will have a shell more rubidium will have even more so as you go down the group the size of the atoms is increasing right the size is increasing so if the size is increasing that actually means that uh, um, going down the group the radius will have to increase right so going up the group the radius has to decrease okay it won't increase it will rather fall it will decrease okay and going across the period what happens to the radius well going across the period the electrons are still increasing but guys remember one thing going across the period the radius should be should is expected to increase right but no the radius actually falls as you go across the period the reason for that is because the number the shielding effect is constant okay the number the total number of shells is constant okay what do we mean by shielding effect you guys know what shielding effect means shielding effect all right shielding effect let me just quickly explain what that is you guys i'm expecting you might know what that actually is okay if you go for example this is an atom the nucleus of an atom okay this is the first shell this is the second shell this is the third shell and now for example there is an electron over here in the third shell the third shell assume it to be the outermost shell and now there are certain electrons over here and uh, in between the nucleus and that electron the outermost electron the electrons the inner electrons are also negatively charged the outer electron is also negatively charged if both of them are negatively charged what do you guys think will will the inner electrons they'll they'll will they attract the outermost electron or will they repel it they'll repel it because it's negative the inner electrons are negative outer electron is also negative and if that is also negative that actually means there is a repulsive force by these inner shell electrons this repulsive force is actually the shielding effect why is it called shielding effect because this nucleus inside is positive right it's positively charged and this nucleus what it will tend to do is it will tend to attract the outermost electron towards itself right it will try to attract that electron towards itself uh, due to its positive nature and that electron being negative right but what these electrons the inner electrons do they shield this outer electron from this attractive force 
of the nucleus by providing their opposing force okay this opposing force provided by the inertial electrons is called the shielding effect so now if you look at the first the periods for instance uh, these periods over here as you go across the period you might be knowing that the the shell number remains constant okay the shells are constant across the period they are constant as you go across the period if the shells are constant then that actually means the shielding effect will also remain constant and if the shielding effect is constant then that actually means the inner shell electrons are not changing and if the inner shell electrons are not changing and going across the period what what going across the period actually does it increases the proton number right proton number can also be thought of as the nuclear charge because the nucleus has the charge of the protons right nuclear charge so as you go across the period the nuclear charge increases shielding effect remains constant so the overall electron density around the nucleus it shrinks towards the nucleus because the shielding there the shielding is not increasing but the nuclear strength in the middle it, it is continuously increasing so the nucleus will um, try to pull the outer electron towards itself while keeping the electron density between the nucleus and the outer electron constant all right so that's why going across the period the radius has to shrink and what about the shielding effect uh, if we've uh, we've discussed what shielding effect is let's uh, keep put in the trend of shielding effect as well what happens to the shielding effect as you go down the group well uh, it's not very important to discuss the shielding effect in the groups because as you go um, down the group the shielding effect it obviously has to increase as you go down the group right but so is the proton number increasing so they kind of balance out each other so there is no significant uh, effect of shielding or significant role of shielding effect over here in the vertical group but there is a significant effect of shielding effect across the period we know that shielding effect is gonna stay constant across the period okay due to the constant number of shells and due to that the radius is decreasing okay so that's what we have to put so this was a quick overview now guys remember one thing ionization energy it changes across the group okay as shown over here and why does it change across the group I'll explain that uh, in the next lecture it changes across the period across the period it is changing right ionization energy is increasing uh, going up the group it is changing as you go up the group it has to increase as you go across the period it has to increase and as you go diagonally it still has to increase successive ionization energy successive ionization energy means first ionization energy second ionization energy third ionization energy fourth ionization energy and so on for the same element so we have to discuss the trends in those as well of the successive energies well not very in in a lot of detail but slightly okay and that's it for this lecture we'll continue with the group trends the explanation for why ionization energy changes in groups in the next lecture thank you